this message is not for the faint-hearted. This is for people who want to get well. But you just don't understand. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I wallowed in my misery for years. I was bitter. I hated my father. I tried to take it out on everybody. I felt sorry for myself. I was sad. I was depressed. I was discouraged. My family was having a life. And I decided I was going to get well. I decided I was not going to spend my life miserable. I was going to get well. I am so different, it is scary. I mean, I am just not at all like the same person. How many of you are not at all like the same person? God is alive. Sow seed for your harvest by helping someone else. Be involved in service of some kind because it helps you keep your mind off yourself. Do anything you can do to keep your mind off yourself. Deposit yourself with God. Put the Holy Spirit in charge of your case. And be sure that you sow seed for your harvest by purposely being a blessing to someone else. Go to Galatians 6, 9, and 10. And let us not lose heart and grow weary and faint in acting nobly and doing right. For in due time and at the appointed season we shall reap if we do not loosen and relax our courage and faint. So then as occasion and opportunity open up to us, let us do good morally to all people, not only being useful or profitable to them, but also doing what is for their spiritual good and advantage. This next sentence was life-changing to me. Be mindful to be a blessing, especially to those of the household of faith, those who belong to God's family with you. Be mindful means you do it on purpose. It, seems, it means you can sit down every day and think, okay, I got two choices here. I can think about myself all day and what I want and what I need and what everybody's not doing and what I'd like them to do and how unfair life is to me. Or I can purposely think about something I can do for somebody else. And I finally thank God chosen the latter. Every one of you knows somebody that you could help, somebody you could encourage, somebody that you could put a smile on their face. And if you don't know anybody, go out and find somebody. You don't have to go very far in our society today to find somebody that looks sad enough that you could cheer them up. Is anybody listening to me? You gotta fight selfish self-centeredness. You gotta fight to keep yourself off your mind all the time. Come on, be honest. How many of you think about yourself more than you ought to? Oh, we got a lot of holy people here tonight. Yeah, what about me? You're right. 1 Thessalonians 5.15. See that none of you repays another with evil for evil. That means you don't get to get the people back that hurt you. Sorry, the process is you have to pray for them, not say unkind things about them. And even if God tells you to, you may have an opportunity to bless them, and boy, won't that be grating on your flesh. <laughs> but we bless people that have hurt us by simply not repeating to others what they've done and ruining their reputation. So hard to keep your mouth shut when somebody's hurt you. See that none of you repays another with evil for evil, but aim to show kindness and seek to do good. If you've got an amplified Bible, you should draw a circle around the word aim and the word seek. Because seek means to crave, pursue, and go after with all of your might. So that's not saying that you're going to feel like being good to people. It says you're going to seek to do it on purpose. Stop making excuses. This is all going over really good. You guys look happier at every one of these points. Okay, there's a reason why we are dysfunctional, certainly. But we have to take full responsibility for where we're at if we ever want to get beyond it. I acted bad because I'd been raised wrong, I'd been abused, and 
I'd never seen anything but control and manipulation, so I carried that into my lifestyle, and I was a controller and a manipulator, and if I didn't get my way, I got mad. But one day, I finally had to stop making excuses, and I had to say, you know what? I know why I'm this way, but I can't let it be an excuse to stay this way. So I had, had to give up all my excuses. Now, each one of these things that I'm talking to you about took years. <laughs> Because the moment that God shows us the right thing to do, that doesn't mean we go do it. We go many times around the same mountain and keep going through the same pain over and over and over before we finally say, oh, maybe God was right. I'd like to say that God just said, stop feeling sorry for yourself, and I never had another pity party. But it didn't work that way. And you'll stay at that point until you obey God on that thing. You don't just get a pass. It's not like playing Monopoly. Are you waiting on God or is God waiting on you? How long is your healing going to take? Well, how well are you going to cooperate? <laughs> You can make the journey longer or shorter. Some of you are probably thinking right now, I'm glad you ain't my mama. <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I love you enough to tell you the truth. I love you enough to take a chance on somebody getting mad at me for a few minutes if it'll get you out of the mess you're stuck in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We do get mad when somebody tells us the truth. I was not confronting the abuse in my life. When I walked away from my father's home, I thought I'd walked away from the problem, but, the, but I took the problem with me. I had it in my thoughts. I had it in my conversation. I had it in all my actions, and I wasn't dealing with it. I was just going to church and going home, going to church and going home, going to church and going home. And a woman came to our church one night with her husband who had been a farmer prostitute and she'd been abused when she was a child. And she'd written a book and Dave bought me the book. And I opened it up the next morning. And as I began to read her story, it was exactly like my story. Some of the things she described that her father had done to me were things that I had buried and hadn't thought about for a long time. And all of a sudden, all that came rushing back. I threw that book across the room and I said, I will not read this. It made me mad that he bought it for me. After all, did he think I had a problem? <laughs> there was probably a book out there he'd have got for himself. And the Holy Spirit said to me, softly, tenderly, it's time. It's time. So maybe just God is just using me tonight to say to someone here or someone watching by TV, it's time. It's time to stop being touchy and insecure and getting your feelings hurt and getting mad every time you don't get your way. Trying to manipulate and control every situation so you don't get hurt. It's time to stop letting fear control your life. It's time to stop bleeding. It's time to live the life that Jesus died for you to have and be the person that Jesus wants you to be. Amen. Amen. It's time. And boy, I tell you what. Mm, when the Holy Ghost got hold of me. You know, there's a difference in going to church and being a real serious Christian. <laughs> I mean, you can sit in the pew to your church's your bottom's flat. <laughs> and you get hands laid on you till you don't have any hair left. <laughs> We're educated way beyond our level of obedience. 
How many more Bible studies do we have to do on forgiveness before we get around to doing it? Well, it's just hard. It's just hard. It's just hard, sister. It's just hard. You know, you know what's hard? Being full of hatred and bitterness and resentment and unforgiveness. That's what's hard. Forgiveness is not hard. Forgiveness is a free pass into personal joy. Amen? It's a free pass into personal joy. God doesn't tell you to forgive your enemies for them. He tells you to do it for you. He wants you to be free. Don't let what they did to hurt you keep hurting you every day by hating them. Do not return evil for evil, but seek to do good. You say, I am going to make the devil eat what he did to me. I am going to bless every person that I come near. You got to face the truth. And it's not the truth about somebody else you got to face. It's the truth about you you got to face. Like when I was praying for Dave to change and God said, Dave's not the problem, you are. (laughs) And for the next three days, God showed me what it was like to live in the house with me and I was shocked. (laughs) Absolutely, totally shocked. I cried for three days. I was a pretty good sized mess. It's a good thing God gave me a, a godly easygoing, adaptable, mature husband. You know, it might be hard for some of you to sit down and have a little meeting with God and hear some of the things he'd really like to say. He does want to say a few things once in a while besides, I love you. He does love us, and for that reason, he'll tell us the truth. But the Holy Spirit knows when to reveal stuff to us. If you read John 16, Jesus said, you're going to be better off if I go away because when I do, I'm going to send the comforter. And the Holy Spirit is a spirit. He can be everywhere at the same time working in everybody. And Jesus even said, I have things to tell you that you're not ready to hear, but the Holy Spirit will reveal things to you. He will guide you into all truth. He will guide you into truth. So even though it's painful, it's not more than we can take. God never allows more to come on us than what we can bear, but with every temptation, he also provides the way out. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He's kind. He led me through the mess in my life a little bit at a time. He didn't just reveal everything all at once. And he's still revealing and still showing. And I'm sure that I'll be working with God, and I like it. I like to change. I like to grow. It takes a mature person to face truth about themselves without condemnation. Did you hear me? Now, back then, I didn't know how to do that. So everything God would show me, I'd have another three-week pity party. Now, I'm the worst person in the whole world. Nobody's as bad as me. I bet sometimes God just thinks, will you wake up? But I don't do that now. I don't do that now. God can show me things that are wrong with me. And I hate to sound stupid, but I don't even feel bad. I'm just like, okay, let's go after it. Let's go get it. I'm with you, God. Let's get it. I mean, I even prayed this morning, God, I want you to have your way in my life. And if you have to tie me to something to get your way, then just tie me to it and do what you got to do. Because I know that everything that I go through that's hard, that's hard, it brings another freedom in my life. It brings another level of peace. It brings another level of joy. It was very hard for me to get to where I wasn't overly concerned about what people thought. Because I was insecure and tried to buy friends. Not necessarily with money because I didn't have any, but just by doing everything they wanted and on and on. And I had to go through some rough times. I got involved with some people that I just thought were wonderful. And and, and, I mean, they were. They were good, 
good Christian people, but they ended up hurting me so bad and it took me three years to get over it. But God did that for my benefit. He just showed me their weaknesses. So I no longer put too much confidence in people, but I would put my confidence in Him. It was hard. It was so painfully hard. But on the other side of it, I was freer. I love people, but I'm not devastated if they let me down. There's not a lot that surprises me anymore with people. People are like, ah, can you believe it? Yeah, I can. Sad to say. How, how many of you know what I'm talking about? I got to get on fast forward now. Are you okay? When it becomes painful, don't run. Oh, this is a big one. Oh, not that, God. I'm not ready for that now. Genesis 16, 8 and 9. And he said, Hagar, Sarah's maid, where did you come from and where are you intending to go? And she said, I'm running away from my mistress, Sarah. And the angel of the Lord said to her, go back to your mistress and humbly submit to her control. Person after person after person in the Bible ran. Moses ran. The Bible says he fled from Egypt. It doesn't say God told him to leave Egypt. He ran. And after 40 years, God said, go back to Egypt. Come on. Sarah gave Hagar to Abraham as a second wife because she'd not been able to get pregnant. She got a bright idea that if she gave her handmaiden to her husband that she could get a child through her. And as soon as Hagar got pregnant, she got a bad attitude. Nah, 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 nah. And Sarah got upset and started to mistreat her. So Hagar ran. Well, it wasn't right what Sarah was doing, but Hagar's bad attitude wasn't right either. And a lot of times, God will put us with somebody that's really hard on us, and they become sandpaper to us. They're not right in what they're doing, but God uses them to get after something in us. How many of you got some sandpaper going in your life right now? Well, you know what? You can move away from it, and you're going to move next door to some more. You can quit your job and go somewhere else. There'll be more of them on that job. Because when God decides to get after something in you, He's going to get it. So it's not going to do you any good to run. God told Jonah, go to Nineveh and preach to them. And he went the exact opposite direction to Tarshish because he didn't want to go to Nineveh. He got on a ship because he was out of the will of God. He got in a horrible storm. The men realized it was him, threw him overboard. A whale swallowed him. He spent three days in the belly of a whale. Finally, he, he repented and God spit him, out, spit him out with seaweed and everything all over his head. <laughs> and the word of the Lord came to Jonah saying, go to Nineveh. <laughs> Is anybody with me tonight? Elijah ran from Jezebel, sat down under a tree and wanted to die. And that was a day after he killed 400 Baal prophets with his bare hands. Up and down, emotionally. Woo! -hoo -hoo. God gave him a nap and a couple of good meals, and he said, Now get back and do what I told you to do. <laughs> it's not going to do you any good to run. It is not going to do you any good to run from hard things. All you're doing is putting off the inevitable. Boy, I learned that the hard way. Come on, I'm 67 years old. It took me 40 years to learn what I'm downloading on you tonight. You're getting the mother load. You better like it. I can save you about 20 years of pain. Amen? The next time you're in an uncomfortable situation and you decide to run, remember, Mama Joyce said, don't run. <laughs> don't run. Otherwise, you'll end up back there anyway. The only way out is through. Totally forgive the people that have hurt you and forgive yourself for anything that you've done wrong. 
I'm not going to spend too much time there. Surely you've heard many messages on forgiveness. If you've heard 20 and you're still not doing it, then get up! <laughs> well, you just don't know how hard it is. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. <laughs> you love God. You wouldn't be here if you didn't love God. So let him have his whole way in your life. Everything that God tells us to do is for our good. He's not telling us things to make him happy. He wants us to be happy. Forgive. Get, stop being mad. Get the strife out of your life. Settle down and trust God. And you know what? You're not going to stand before all the people that want to judge you. You're going to stand before God and give an account of yourself. And so you need to start taking care of yourself between you and God, and you need to be whole, completely well and whole, and live the life that Jesus died for you to live. Stop blaming and move on. Oh, blame, blame, blame. Sarah blamed Abraham. Abraham blamed Sarah. Adam blamed Eve. Eve blamed the serpent. If you're going to blame anybody, blame the devil. You know what? My dad hurt me because he was messed up himself. Hurting people hurt people. It pretty much doesn't do you one bit of good to be mad at the people that hurt you. They were only acting out of their own pain. Many times they don't even know that you got hurt. You just got in the way of their mess. That's the truth. I don't believe there's very many people that just get up every day and decide to try to go make somebody miserable. There may be a few, but most people are just hurting. The world is full of hurting, wounded people that don't know who they are. They don't, they don't understand the love of God. And they're suffering. Romans 12, 21 says you overcome evil with good. Like I said earlier, if you want to get the devil back, start being good to everybody you can. How many of you understand that principle? Because if you don't understand that, you ain't going to make it. In the midst of your mess, you've got to reach out to somebody else and be a blessing. Put the Holy Spirit in charge of your case. If you feel like you need some counseling, I have nothing at all against that. There are many wonderful counselors that help people. But I do have to be honest and tell you that if you're in counseling 40 years, I think something's wrong. <laughs> then you're just paying an expensive fee to get somebody to listen to you. And God will listen to you all the time for free. Amen. The Holy Spirit knows you intricately. He knows when you can take what truth. He's your counselor, your guide, your teacher. I challenge you to put the Holy Spirit in charge of your case tonight and mean it with all your heart. God, I put you in charge of my case. I don't know what I need, but I'm sure you do. All I know is I'm making a decision tonight that I'm going to get well. And he who hath begun a good work in you is well able to complete it and bring it to its finish. God himself, after you've suffered a little while, will complete you and make you what you ought to be. And lastly, let me say this. Whatever you do, above all, enjoy the journey. While God's dealing with you about some mess in your life, go ahead and enjoy your day. It's not going to do you any good to be miserable for the next 40 years while God's trying to heal you. Enjoy your life. Thank God that He's working in you. Thank God when He convicts you of sin. 
Thank God that you can feel. Thank God that you've got enough of a heart that you can feel the conviction of the Holy Ghost. I tell you, I don't get by with much, and it used to irritate me, but now I'm glad. I'm glad that I can feel the Holy Spirit dealing with me about things that He doesn't want me to do. Don't get stuck. It's time to press on. Amen. 